Good I'm evening, fine. everybody. I think I know most of you. For those that don't know me, I'm Denise Promosa, the adult services librarian here at the library. And tonight we have a newcomer, <laughs> or not. Um, Mary Baker Wood is our local historian, and she is also um, a recipient for the Star Award um, for her dedication to public history. So she received that this year, the Massachusetts <laughs> History Award. I've belonged to the Massachusetts History Alliance for a long time, so they finally gave me an award. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for coming, and I'm sure we will have a really enjoyable time. So the um, topic for tonight is picturing Main Street. This is actually the fifth in a series of slideshows that I've done um, working with uh, Cable Access. And um, this is actually the first one after COVID, I just realized. I'm concentrating in this one on um, taking, basically taking it geographic, uh, well, geographically, taking it from, um, from the um, town line in, in East Brookfield, going towards, spending most of the time in Spencer Center and out to the other with little digressions. Um, and we are going to be talking about um, a variety of things that, that hit on the whole idea of Main Street. And so um, this is actually Spencer, about 1910. And for all of you who remember the Clevens factory, formerly the Isaac Prouty boot factory um, up on your left, all of those people are coming out, streaming out onto the street. They're going down onto Mechanic Street. They're going to shops. They're going to stores. They're clearly maybe going to bowling and pool. I don't know. Um, and some of these fashionably dressed ladies are probably going to some of the shops in town. But this is what Spencer looked like. You can also see the surface of the road. We haven't yet gotten to the point where we have a nice, smooth um, surface. Well, potholes aside, that we have in, <laughs> what we have in, modern, in our modern times. And I just wanted to look at the concept of, of what a Main Street means to people because the term, when you look it up, Main Street is about... Um, it, small town values, about a place that is a crossroads for people. That's how it's often thought of. But um, Spencer's history is a little bit different. This is what Spencer looked like in the very beginnings. It was what they called the howling wilderness. And this, um, this is a very accurate portrayal of what Spencer looked like um, in the early 1700s. We weren't incorporated until 1753. I think a lot of you know that Spencer was part of Leicester. Um, and so um, we weren't actually incorporated as a separate community. Um, and we, um, when people came out to settle this, there were no main streets. There were no streets of any kind, no roads, no connectors. People were coming out literally having to take this, and, and there were all kinds of wildlife still available in this um, kind of um, environment. It was um, usually first cut or primeval forests. And so that's a kind of a good example of what we looked like. And then this happened. We start taking down, and this is, this is happening all across New England, we start taking down all the trees. We need the fuel, we need to build our barns, we need to build our houses. And so um, this is sort of a representation, actually that's the other way around, but um, you, you, you're carving out place for livestock. But you still don't have connecting roads. And the early descriptions of Spencer are that everyone lived in their own little compound um, and were battling the, uh, the elements, were battling, there were, there still actually had, were remains of action from the French Indian War. So it was, it was kind of a scary environment, but people were coming out. Um, some of our earliest settlers were English. Uh, Samuel Bemis was our first settler and um, they uh, were proprietors. They, it was an investment. And then they came out and started building the farms. And so what we have in the beginning is these individual places um, that are not connected in any way. And this is what Spencer's original plan was. There's, there's no, the, a lot of the lines, there are rivers running through it. There are a couple of, like so, most of the lines you're seeing are rivers. They're not Main Street. There is no Main Street yet, even in, um, up into the um, mid uh, 1700s. Um, we have th that central part is actually uh, like Whittemore. We have, I think, in, in this room somebody who's, who has an ancestor who, is, who owned one of these first pieces of, of land. And so it was very, um, 
It was, it was very much um, a, a business adventure for people, and it was definitely not settled. We didn't have a Main Street yet. And then, this is uh, 1839, so this is one of the first um, pictures we have of Spencer. Photo photographs weren't yet being distributed, so it's an engraving from 1839. And again, this was uh, by Samuel Barber, who went around New England. There's literally a picture of every town in Massachusetts, two-volume book. And he went around about this same time and drew what he saw. And so in this one, you're seeing something that's beginning to happen. You're beginning to have some homes. There's not really like a central access. Down in the lower right, probably a mill wheel. What's happening now in, in towns is that um, people are, we have great water resources in Spencer. We have some major rivers, we have some major ponds, and so, um, and, and we did a lot of damming up. So there were a lot of mills that started to be built. People were building their own things, but we're getting a little bit more um, of something in town. I think that object up on the hill is actually a powder house. The Monday Grove knows all the sad stories about powder houses blow, blowing up um, over Spencer's history. Um, but um, that's where we were heading. And, and this is what happens in almost every New England town, certainly it happened in Spencer. First thing that's built usually is a church, which usually um, doubled as the meeting house so that people could go in because, and, and, and meet every year for their annual meeting to become, um, to legislate what needed to happen in town. Um, and also taverns. Spencer had three taverns in this center, probably about this time. We also had a lot of neighborhoods in Spencer, and so um, there are places like Jocktown, which is actually out in um, um, North Spencer. We had Proudyville and Sugdenville, which were Upper and Lower Wire Village. We had Hillsville. We had Canada, for those of you who remember Spencer. There was a French-Canadian presence, so it was called Canada, um, and, uh, and other villages. So that's what, what was happening with us. And the first road building, the first major project was the Boston Post Road. I think most of you have seen these markers or are aware of these markers. This is actually right in front of the, um, in front of the Shoppers Village, yeah. And um, it measures that it's 59 miles from Boston. These markers were actually were the brainchild of um, uh, Benjamin Franklin, who was one of our earliest postmasters in the country. And so um, his interest was in transportation and pe getting people from place to place. So now Spencer is beginning to develop roads. We have Boston Post Road going through from, uh, from um, towards Springfield all the way out towards Boston. We have a north road that goes up towards Templeton. We have a south road that goes down towards um, Sturbridge. So we're beginning to build the, the roads and they were beginning to be uh, used by horse and cart and by, by various folks. These are some of the early um, photos of, um, of Spencer. This is um, our, our um, 1877 map. And this is what they call a bird's eye, so it would have been done from some distance. But this is taking us on Main Street, what is Route 9, all the way up through town. We're getting to the center, um, and at this point, um, we have some sort of a hotel here. We're beginning to have uh, shoe shops and other uh, businesses being built. This over here, um, all of these buildings are the beginnings of the Isaac Prouty Boot Shop. I think most of you have heard of that, or of Clevins. It was considered one of the largest boot manufacturers in, the, in New England. Brockton fights us for that title, but, but it was considered. And so, and we just did a, a walking tour. Um, this was the uh, Cider Mill Brook, which came out of Whittemore. And then we have Muzzy Meadow. Um, and then, no, but notice it's, it's not really um, filled in yet. By the time we get now to the 1890s, Spencer is now coming in and we've got a main road here it's coming up through, and the size of this, um, of the Clevin, uh, this was the largest building uh, in Spencer. There was, there's no doubt about it. And it was the largest um, set of industries. And again, it's going to be fed by the, the Cider Mill. Cider Mill Brook um, comes out of um, Whittemore, comes down through here, actually has always gone under the road and then gone down into the bottom of Spencer into the Valley Street area. We had dozens of mills. We had a, mostly woolen mills, but Cider Mill was feeding that. Um, this is now an aerial view from um, uh, 1953. Um, we had a, a, a bicentennial for the town of Spencer. We had a series of things done. And as you can see in here, we still have 
Um, this is looking coming from the um, East Brookfield side. We're going back. We go by the hotel. We have the Sugden Block. The library are here now. Um, and then we have this huge complex that was Clevens. And then we go up and we have um, the, old, the town hall, the um, Methodist church, and then finally the congregational church. And then we go, this was done in the 70s, and this is coming from the other direction. This is, again, this is going to be the church. We're going down by the town hall, and now you can see by the 70s in this whole area, um, we have a parking lot. And that was um, after the um, destruction um, of the Prouty Boot Shop. And then this, just to give sort of an update of where, um, where it looks, this was probably about, I'm thinking five years ago, uh, because the uh, diner was still here. And I'm just going to give you a heads up. Any of you who love cars, what I found uh, doing all of, going through all of these photos of town is we parked a lot of cars. We have a lot, I, I have got, we, I've got everything from Model T's up to a great 50s thing. I know my husband used to know, look at a car and say, oh, that's a 52 Buick, no, because of the fins or whatever. Um, we're going to, you're going to be seeing a lot of cool cars. And then this is looking the other way, the downtown area again. Sugden Block still standing. Um, and uh, signs for the, uh, for the bank, for the Santander Bank. Um, by now, the uh, hotel, of course, is gone. We're, so we're going to take a ride now in, through Spencer. This um, is, as you're coming into Spencer, you're coming from East Brookfield, this is the Seven Mile River Bridge. Um, so that would be the one that, just, that you go over before you hit four, um, 49 to go over to Sturbridge. This is the bridge. And Fred Livermore, who was a very um, well-known teamster, he had, lots of, he had teams of horses and oxen. He was one of our prime movers. He and his crew are out there. And you can also see up in the background that we have a trolley car going through. Um, this um, was probably um, uh, early 1900s, 1911 or so. Um, but the bridge was being built over the Seven Mile River. Does everyone know, anyone know why it's called the Seven Mile? Because huh. at one point, um, after Worcester, you had Leicester and Spencer, and then you had Brookfield, and then the next big settlement was Springfield. The Seven Mile was, was the a measurement um, from, um, from that intersection to Brookfield. So that was to say, that we, and that was, you're heading out after Brookfield, you're going into the unknown wilderness. It's technically, I think, 10 miles um, in length, but um, that's the, the story. And this part of Spencer was known as Westville. Um, and this is something some of you may remember because it's off of Main Street, it's on South Spencer Road, but it was built because Westville, this part of Spencer, um, was not highly developed and this is the first, the building of the first filter beds. And I believe Nathan Craig, who had, the, there's a Craig house up on uh, Craig Road, um, was, was in, in charge, was the superintendent of this. Um, I bring this up because um, there, you can see they're still working, uh, doing a lot of handwork. But this part of Spencer, Westville, uh, went from the East Brookfield line up until, um, almost until where the, the cemetery is, the, the Pray For Us Cemetery. Westville was known for a tavern. It was one of the first taverns, was Mr. Bemis, one of our first um, settlers. And it was known for a lot of mills. One thing I tried to find a picture of, and I haven't, and, and so this is one where I'm wondering if people have memories. There was, as you went down, um, sort of past Clems, you uh, went before the entrance what is now the entrance to 49, there was uh, what was called the Black and Gold Restaurant, and there were a series of cabins. It was a motel of some sort. Does, do you remember? Rainbow. Motel. Rainbow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you, I, you would know that. Yeah, so it was the Rainbow Motel. For some reason, I can't seem to find, um, um, find any uh, pictures of it. Um, we also knew that supposedly there was a hermit. I think we've talked about that. There was a hermit that lived down behind there. Do you, yeah. Um, so, so Westville was still kind of the, the wild, wild west, and, and so you had all of that empty land. Um, in the very beginning, of course, the cemetery had not been built, and all that land where the fair is was not there. Clems was originally a tractor supply, was originally an agway, and I think a tractor supply before that. I don't know, for those of you who, who um, knew agway, or knew this building, um, Clems has been actually built into something of, a, um, of an all-purpose store, but it was a farmer thing, and that's the theme that we find on, on, on our Main Street, is that there are a lot of businesses serving farmers. We had a strong agricultural community, 
Um, and so uh, we have the businesses that did that. This is the best picture I could find of the old fair. And what is now called, I think it's still called the fair plaza. Uh, there's a whole generation of people who remember that that was, a lot of people worked at the fair. Lot, it was, <laughs> yeah, how many people worked at the fair? We can see, yep, yep. Um, and a lot of us for a long time were finding stickers on things that, were, you know, like utensils or things you bought for the house that, that had the fair sticker on it. For Spencer, it was, you know, a, a, big, uh, a big department store. I, I don't have exact records of it, but it came in um, when this was built. It was in the early 60s, because I remember it from that time. And then, uh, does somebody remember when uh, it, it actually closed? Because uh, the records, I, I get like three different answers. Because it, it went into, it was after I was in high school, it went into the mid-70s. It's, f yeah. Yeah, put yourself through college. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, it was it was here for a while, and then um, it was originally the fair store, and then eventually it expanded. Now, of course, it's it's expanded into all kinds of shops. It, this is the Pray for Us Cemetery. One of the things Spencer is known for. Um, uh, my understanding is that uh, pilots very often use this for visual identification because it, it's um, it's so prominent. And so this was sort of the end of where Westville was. So this whole area was Westville. It, it's getting um, over time, it's getting uh, built up. Um, and then this, if you can see from the aerial, was Spencer Furniture, one of the largest Spencer furni um, one of the largest furniture companies. Um, it, before that in town, it was Lamoureux um, and Crowley. And just to the left of it, and again, I'm not finding great photographs, were um, two different, uh, there was an auto body shop and there was a um, gas station, I think it was SO Gas. Um, and I know uh, Brian Gobi ran um, his garage at that spot. So this technically was Main Street. The um, portion that the um, new fire department and, and or the safety complex is located on is, was, was not uh, Main Street. It was, and now, of course, I, they, they had to change their, everybody had to change their addresses. I think in recent times, they, they, it's now called Old, with an E, Old Main Street. But this was Main Street. And um, what was over on the other side was just um, woods and kind of uh, scrubby brush. Um, and then I'm including these just so you, as a point of reference, both the uh, police department and the fire department are located on that um, part near Bix Bixby Road, but that was not the original road. And then this was the school known as Old Red. Um, how many of you went to a neighborhood school in Spencer here? Yeah, one, two, three, yeah, so a, a few of you. Um, in Spencer, it was West Main Street School, Grove Street, Pleasant Street. Um, Lakes, well, Lake Street was, yeah, Lake Street was later. This school now is a private residence. Um, you're going to notice when we see pictures of the old town hall that had burned down um, in 19, uh, yeah, 1926, um, this uh, particular monument is the Howe Monument. So it's the monument to, to um, three of the Howe um, gentlemen who were inventors, obviously Elias Howe and his cousin and, and his two cousins. And that was moved down to the front of here. Um, and this was um, a, a good sized school. And again, now you can see it, the, the windows have changed. It's now um, been made into a private residence. I, I went into a lot more detail um, on the program I did on school days, if you want more details about it, because we have some great stories. This, <laughs> talking about great stories, this is Spencer Products. It was originally, um, it was originally a box factory that um, there were mills just down behind, so you're talking down behind on Valley Street area, there were all kinds of, um, of mills down there, and um, then there were all of the shoe factories. So this originally started as a box factory, and then it was taken over in, in the uh, 1900s um, by, by the, before the Depression, it was taken over um, by the Allen Squire Company. The main um, uh, building for Allen Squire is up on, near Ash Street, but this was a subsidiary, and they made things like sporting shoes, and um, they said they made bicycle shoes, and they also um, uh, army boots. One of the things about the the shoe, the shoe and boot industry is it would like go into a little bit of a decline, and then we'd have a war, and then uh, the need for combat boots or, or other things. Right back there, you, you, this gentleman is standing right here where we have a set of cavalry boots. 
Those were made up here at, well, it's not there anymore, at that imaginary place I'm pointing to, the, um, um, the Proudy Boot Shop. And um, when they were um, taking apart, it, the, the shop had closed, um, they were taking apart, somebody found these in the rafters, and they're uh, Civil War cavalry boots. And so um, that, was a, that kept spurring these businesses. But um, this also has a story. I, I talk about stories from Main Street. This was a place where a lot of people um, had, had works, were working in the shoe business. And we have a story from um, the mid-1935 that there was a woman named Pearl Moran. She was 28. Um, she was um, divorced. She had a couple of kids. And she was uh, living with um, a man named Roy Martin. They both worked at this um, particular um, establishment. It turns out that he had a violent streak. And at one point, he came back to the shop and started threatening her. And her boss, running at, at, at Allen Squire, um, just fired him. He lost his job. He did not uh, take that well. And what subsequently happened was that she was coming out. And this is Main Street in the middle of the day in August. Um, she was coming out of the store about to cross the street, and he gunned her down. I mean, shot her three times, and then, then shot her when she was on the ground. Um, and um, then the story gets weirder, because then supposedly he jumped back into his car, and it looked like he was going to shoot himself, um, but it didn't load. So he grabbed another gun, and at this point, evidently thought better of the notion, and ended up going down uh, Meadow Street, out to North Brookfield, and was apprehended um, over in Oakham. Um, and, and arrested for it. The funny thing is that years later, a few years ago when I was doing, uh, I, I do research, for, you know, people will say I'm looking up an ancestor or I want to find out about a house. Um, I was contacted by the family of Pearl Moran wanting to know if I had uh, a copy of the story from the newspaper, and we did. A week later, I had descendants of Roy Martin calling, and they said they did not know each other. I, I guess he and fact, didn't even know this, had just found out this story about his family. So I just want to tell you that Spencer had its, you know, had its scary days. And if you see a history of the police department, um, it, we, we kept them busy. Uh, of course, the other thing is that Spencer has never been a dry town. And so um, there, there was lots of, lots going on. This is Father at Main Street, and just to give you a sense, one of the things about Main Street, just like Disney, uh, what, two or three times a day, I don't know, they do a parade. And so this happened to have been, this is, uh, a per, for a lot, uh, that's not really Elias Howe, but Elias Howe float, and this was probably from our uh, Bicentennial 1953 uh, parade. And as you can see, those houses, so this is up closer to High Street, you can see the, um, um, you know, the angle of those. I, I always go by and think, how does somebody mow those? <laughs> so <laughs> um, so that's, uh, that's what's going on there. The Fortin family um, uh, on this, it does not, it, it, this is what it looks like today. We had an old photo and I couldn't find it again. Um, we had an old photo of showing the original store, uh, I mean the original um, uh, gas station uh, shop, and it had uh, one of the nice old Coke machines on the side, those red ones that made a clunking sound. They were, it was amazing. Spencer had a lot of car dealerships. We had a lot of um, car repair shops, um, and we had a lot of taverns. So I interesting mix of what we decided we would do. This is um, a picture of just down the street from here. This is called the Kingsley Block. And if you look to your right, what you're seeing um, in this day, it was an Oldsmobile dealer, but it's now, the, the, the freestanding is, a, um, is Tony's Cleaners, and that's been there for a while. The Kingsley Block um, was um, built by a man, Mr. Arthur Kingsley, and then the business was taken over by his son, Harry. Arthur was, um, was an entrepreneur, and so at, the, at that point in time, on this site was a place called the Spencer House. It was we had, we had the hotel, we had the Windsor, we had other places, but um, this, the Spencer House had existed for a long time, and it was a, a hotel. They actually, um, in the beginning to build this big, tall building, they just moved the Spencer House along. And any of you who are part of the Munda group know that we talk about how mobile all of our homes were. So many homes in Spencer were moved. It was, in the beginning, it was by oxen. In, in, in other places, um, it was, um, they had horse teams. And, not, and in modern times, they have riggers, like Southbridge rigging or something. But this, um, they had moved uh, it over. They actually 
um, put the Spencer, and it was, a, it was you know, a large size three-story hotel. They actually put it on capstans, um, put some rollers under it, got a four-horse team, and literally took it and moved it to the other side. And down behind here are garages. This building became um, the, the business center for Mr. Kingsley, and he ran originally a furniture business, but then he also ran an undertaking business. And this happened a lot. Because they're bo they don't both deal with furniture, <laughs> coffins and regular furniture, they, um, he, he built an, a very good upscale sort of business in, in, um, in um, selling furniture, and then he built, and he had the first funeral parlor in this building on the second floor um, in Spencer. He, he had actually, um, he, so he had apartments as part of it. In fact, Mrs. Luther Hill uh, lived here for a little while, but his family lived upstairs in one part, but they had uh, a funeral um, parlor, and it even had an elevator that they would bring the casket up. It was um, quite the thing. And then in the back, they had this amazing garage. You can see that, that it was the switch, when he was first doing it, early 1900s, we're switching from um, these um, kinds of horse and buggy kinds of things to, um, to trucks, to autos. This one says private ambulance. He, re he ended up having a hearse, and then he ran one of the first ambulance uh, businesses in Spencer, um, which has that odd connotation, like, you know, you, you want to make sure when you're stepping in there what, he, what, what the intentions are, but, um, but he, and, and so it says house furnitures and funeral directors, and supposedly in that garage down in the behind, there was a huge turntable so that vehicles could come in, get onto the turntable, be turned around, and there were people who, who, who have told the story of, of actually having seen that. Um, and again, this is just the other part of his building. We'll, we'll see that he, his, his son took over the business and eventually his son uh, ended up in um, farther up the street. We'll recognize the building. This is the building at the corner of uh, Elm Street and there, a, a garage was, was subsequently placed here. This was Lorenzo Bemis's um, uh, store. And so as you were coming through Main Street at this time, um, a lot of these, see this has got the mansard roof, they did a Victorian style, they, they, were, they were coming in. A lot of men were beginning to go into business, they were great entrepreneurs, they were running um, not just boot shops, but a lot of different industries, and this was a place where people would stay, and this is the house that was literally raised, moved over. Eventually, um, it was taken down um, so that the other building could be put in its place. And then this is, this is what replaced it. Um, many of you know, knew Fred Malosh and knew, knew Malosh's garage. This is actually opposite it. Now we're getting into the, the center of town. This is a close-up, and, and I'm just showing this. It's of that same um, uh, map because we have, um, there's the, the grout, what was called the grout corner, and um, this is the grout house, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute um, because, um, we're going to be talking about spaces we can see. So we're talking about what was out here and then what, where we're standing now. So, any, everybody know what this is? Jenks Tavern? Yeah. Um, we actually have a painting of it, uh, Emily Bemis painting of Jenks Tavern. It was technically not the first, but it, it, there was a tavern there before, but um, Jenks was very successful and this is right where the hotel stood. And um, this is basically Pleasant Street Corner. Up behind you, the, the mansions are starting to go up in High Street. Um, people are making more money. money. We have more wealthy entrepreneurs. Um, and we, of course, now have the George Washington marker. George Washington actually did stay here. We have accounts. Supposedly, he uh, complimented uh, Mrs. Jenks on the quality of her bread when he left. So there's a, there is a definite connection that he was coming through, um, and this was in, um, when he was uh, t going to take command of the Continental Army. So yes, we are a town that had George Washington stay here. And then um, the hotel built. The hotel actually went through a fire in the late 1800s and then another one in 1910 and then sadly another tragic fire. Um, and this is going to be a theme on Main Street, it is losing some of our most iconic buildings to fire. This was at a time, you can just see the library, so we know it's after um, 1898, or eight, yeah, 1898, probably closer to 1900. You know, you can see a little bit of a tower there. 
and then another angle of it, this is uh, 1907, this is before the 1910 fire, it was in the beginning a popular stay on the, uh, on the post road, but it became a place for what they called the, the carriage trade, for people who would come out, and I've talked about this in other uh, programs, Spencer, because it was still rural and, and we had all these lakes and we had these farms, it was a place where people came out from cities like Boston and ruralized. They would come out and stay, and they might stay in a hotel, they might stay in a farm, and um, get a sense, get the country fresh air, and which is different from, I used to go for rides and the country fresh air that my mother told us we should enjoy was very different country air. Than, <laughs> it was cow country, so um, it was a, a different thing, but people were coming out. And then this, um, we had the fire in 1910, and then the Quinn family took it over. And this happens to be somebody who had uh, given us a postcard, um, 1976. This is the way most of us who remember the hotel remember it. And unlike a lot of um, other drinking establishments down in the Chestnut Street and some of the other areas, this was always meant for um, a more elevated clientele, again, either the carriage trade or, or people, and, and I know even when I got to drinking age, it was still a place where um, you could go and it was, it was somewhat genteel. There were all kinds of parties held there. He had, there were function rooms. We have copies of the menus that they had, and it was um, a very uh, lively place. The Quinn, um, you know, Representative Quinn was, uh, was a part owner, and Nathan Quinn, his brother, who was, had been a uh, a lieutenant colonel in uh, Patton's army had collected a lot of memorabilia. So if, for those of you who had ever been in there, um, you know that it, um, it, there, was, there were you know, all of those hats with the spikes in them and there were sabers and there were all kinds of uh, gear that were in there. It was amazing. I'm not gonna spend too much time because I've done a whole program on this. This is my favorite postcard. <laughs> this was done, oh, we're gonna say 1910, Spencer Mass in the future. And here we have the hotel and the shops and the Sugden block, and we have these, these, the balloons, the dirigibles, the, um, the open trolleys down below. Um, my, my goodness, if you were up in the 50s, you remember there was a lot of modernist stuff that was like, we were all gonna have jet packs and we were all gonna be whatever. Well, um, this didn't happen either, so, but, I, but I love that view. It was an optimistic. And this is, this is, these are hard to look at. We have so many photographs. And, when I did the Master Hotel program, we had several firefighters here who had experienced it. This happened um, 1982 on a January day, freezing January day. Um, there are various conjectures as to what caused this. Um, it had no sprinkler system, it had no advanced alarm systems, and so once it went, it went. Um, and the firefighters did this amazing job in this, I mean, th the equipment was freezing. And there are people who tell stories of going, being on the Mass Pike and going by and seeing the smoke from this fire. And for those of us who were in town, it, 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 you couldn't believe that this was happening. Um, and this was, the re this was what, what remained. Um, and so um, the hotel was completely uh, gone, had to be demolished. And then, so that was right over here. There was an empty lot. It did have um, a um, set of stables in the back. Um, that the Quinn family ran, and then they ran a sort of, when automobiles came in, they, they ran a business from that. Um, that stayed for a while, and then, of course, um, now it's been uh, transformed. Um, this is from, this is a, a view taken about 1880, so I'm just trying to go back. We're, we're trying to stay in the same part of Main Street, but go back. Um, this is looking south from the Massasoit Hotel, and you're looking uh, directly across at um, building right over here. Th again, these are manufacturers. The, um, we don't have the Kingsley block, but we have these other um, businesses. There, there was a, um, a dry goods business. There were, um, th this is a boot factory. Um, and you can see the, the beginnings of these trees. Spencer went in through a period when we had beautiful, of course we had the elm trees, we had beautiful tree-lined streets. And, um, and that was transformed. And notice the boardwalks here. When, um, when Spencer first started building roads, so by about the um, 1860s, Main Street was still a dirt road, well packed, but a dirt road, and they built a lot of these um, wooden sidewalks on the side. Actual sidewalks, like cement sidewalks, didn't come in until like the 1870s, and the person who installed them was John O'Gara, O'Gara Park. Um, he, was, he was big in the construction business, he was big in the cement business, and so um, that began to be constructed. And this is where I want to get into talking about 
the nitty gritty of main streets is we started off with dirt roads and I, I talk about the fact that there were still dirt roads when, when I was growing up. There was still a lot of them. So if you were to go up Hastings Road, well, you don't anymore because of the potholes, but you, if you go up Hastings Road, you get um, beyond, beyond Gold Nugget, and so what we called McGurdy's Farm, and then there was Leach's Farm. We have uh, somebody in, in our group who um, actually um, was the, his mom was the last family to be there. After that, it was just um, a complete dirt road, um, beautiful in the fall. It was just a gorgeous thing. But that was what we had. And so the first roads were dirt roads. Then a process called macadamizing. Macadam, has anyone heard that? Um, macadam was a process actually developed in Scotland um, where you would surface the roads with, um, with crushed gravel. And then you had like a steamroller that would come along and that would pack it down. Eventually what they found out is that packing that down didn't last very well and they had to have special trucks come and water it. It would get really dusty. And so the next process was um, to have what they called tarvia or an oil. The problem with oiling the roads was that the horses, Spencer is known for its hills, the horses couldn't get up um, the hills. So on Pleasant Street and on Main Street, you had, um, you oiled at the middle, you had the, the roads prepared. By now you're beginning to get tracks down the middle for the trolleys, you're getting that going on. But um, they had to leave spaces so that the horses, empty spots so the horses could get up and down because it was so um, difficult. So this is when Eddie's Bakery was here. This is looking over towards, this is opposite Pleasant Street. So you're looking, the house up on the back would be High Street. This is looking down towards the Sitgo Station, and then um, Eddie's Bakery was there for a while, and uh, Abishan's over here. Um, but this is our faithful crew going out. They actually started snow plowing um, and treating roads in like 1913 or so on most of our roads, like Pleasant Street and Main, and Main Street. Um, and this is, uh, this is Eddie, uh, oh no, Armin Jalbert, who was, was uh, head of our... Um, highway department with, this is called Tarvia. This is a Tarvia truck and this was the truck that oiled that. Tarvia is a um, copyrighted uh, product and it, again, it's like a particular kind of oil and that's how our roads were done for a long time until they developed the kind of modern asphalt that we have now. And then just another look, Main Street Hill. Who hasn't had a lovely moment on Main Street Hill? <laughs> and again, we had that whole thing happen that Originally, Main Street was just Spencer. We, we took care of it, it was our town, and then uh, eventually it became a state road, or portions of it became a state road. But this is um, what it looks like, and now we have Sarge's over there with the Pepsi, um, and we have um, Beacon Pharmacy has now moved over across the street to the Spencer uh, shops, and so um, this is just um, reminiscing about what, what it's like. I don't know, even with four-wheel drive, th there were days. And then this is the other thing that the highway department had to deal with and that we dealt with looking at Main Street and this is the 1938 hurricane. This, you can't imagine the destruction and my uh, parents and grandparents um, talked about this. I have an uncle who actually was, yeah, he must have been about 19, he actually was one of the crews that went out, the forestry crews. Forestry crews throughout New England as a result of this storm all over New England um, were going out to pick this up. These were all of our beautiful, beautiful elm trees and it just came through, the storm came through in such a way that it just took everything down. We have pictures of the cemetery, um, the Pine Grove Cemetery with almost all of the trees down. And so this is in um, where the Clevin Shoe Store was and that would be um, looking over at um, Doc Fowler's house and then the Sugden Block over here and then all of the shops along Main Street. But that's uh, another one of the things they had to contend with. And then that was 38. And this is another view of it. This is up near, near Town Hall. Again, roads were blocked. It, 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 was, it was a reminder that Mother Nature um, owns your roads when stuff like this happens. And then we get into, um, I, I just wanted to start, we're proceeding on Main Street. We're starting to head up and look at Main Street coming from this way. This is up Main Street, the, the um, Sugden Block would be down on your left. You're going, heading up, um, and, and notice the horse and carriage. The, ca the road is still kind of a rough road. And then this is what the roads looked like when before they were being uh, surfaced, that um, we had the rain and, and so on. This particular um, postcard, Village Elms, there was this whole, again, there was this notion that little towns like Spence were very scenic, and we had the rural views. And so this is a picture right out here to where this is Doc Fowler's house, and then to the left of that were these two buildings. 
Um, one of them was the Colonel Mason Tavern. It was actually a tavern, one of our earliest ones, and, um, and then another house. And those eventually just came down. So, but, we, but notice the, the fencing, the elms. Spencer's Main Street is looking kind of um, uh, almost lush. Okay, this is where we start talking about, uh, again, about moving houses. This right here is where the Sugden Block is. It was called Grout Corner. This was the Grout store. He was... Um, uh, he ran a very successful general store. He became quite wealthy. And what happened was he then decided to build this beautiful house next to his house. It's um, in, in a, a style called Italianate. It's very uh, ornate. So that was called the Grout Mansion. What happened was um, when the library was to be built, Richard Sugden this, this property was coming for sale. Grout was not going to be running his business much longer. Richard Sugden, actually through his friend Luther Hill, purchased this property and in the following year made the announcement at town meeting that he was donating funds for the Richard Sugden Library that we're sitting in. And so these buildings had to go. And again, it's just this, the fact that it is... Um, you just pick up buildings and move them around. That's just what you did. Um, you didn't just take them all down. Um, and I, I mean, I worked at Old Sturbridge Village at a time when we brought the Bixby house in, and we brought it down from Charlton. There, it was such a huge deal. They, they had to have rigging companies. They had to take down power lines. It's amazing. These folks just got out there. Notice we don't have power lines to deal with yet. But um, this house, where the library is standing right now, was moved over to the left, and if some of you are old enough, you'll remember there was um, an apartment building. It was part of the library property. Um, Herbie Head, who was quite a character in town, uh, was one of the folks who lived there. Most of us remember him well. When they built the mansion, they actually took another house down, and that house got moved up to the corner of Grant Street, and the outbuildings on the other side of Grant Street. So again, we're, everything's in play. So this, um, this house, the, the Italianate house, is moved over to the side, and the, the library is built. And then a couple of years later, Richard Sugden donates the funding for the Sugden block, the business block. And this house was actually moved down to the other side of Main Street and remained in use for a while before it eventually uh, was taken down. So that's Grout Corner, and that's what happened here. And then in the back, we have, um, you can't see it here. I didn't think I had a good picture of it. When we did the cider mill, we, we talked about the fact that Cider Mill Pond had an open, uh, water that came down this way. There was a very high wall um, and, and this, the Clevens factory uh, complex is over on the other side and so that would have come through. When I was talking about cars, look at all the station wagons and the detailing on the cars. This is a uh, Sugden Block. Sugden Block uh, has had a post office, it has had, had a, on, the, on the ground floors, it's had a post office, it's had um, uh, restaurants, it's had in the upper floors, it had uh, halls for, um, for uh, ev events, um, it had offices for professionals, it was, um, it was heavily used. And then this is as it was after, and at this point we've got um, Bridge to Learning, the core and the star, and we've got Morton's. Morton's actually originally was across the street at what we call the Bacon and Colette block, so where Dr. Macklin was. Um, that was where um, the, Morton, the Morton family started their five and dime store. Um, Morty went to, uh, into World War II and when he came back, his brother was running the store for him, he moved across the street into the Sugden block. Um, and then they also started running the, the Whitco store a little bit later. And then this is just another peaceful, gentler time. So we still have the, um, the Mason Tavern there, we still have these big towering buildings, and then um, we have folks here uh, just sort of strolling along. By now, notice that we have sidewalks. Inside all of these buildings were um, a number of different, um, and we've got some interiors, not a lot. This was, um, scares the heck out of me, I, I just can't imagine. But this was Dr. Alonzo Bemis. He was a, a dentist, and he had his offices in the block. We know him because he donated massive amounts of money to the library. And so downstairs, our original museum was the Bemis Room. And he was the one, he was a, he was a dentist here for 47 years. But I look at that now and I, um, I do not see anything there that looks like I want to be there. And then this, um, we're, going, we're looking back across now at um, the um, Bacon Collette building. Again, that is the, um, the building that Dr. Macklin was in. Um, there was actually a drugstore in there, Colette's store, and it was um, in the, uh, sort of on the corner. And here's another view of, of the, the Colette drugstore. 
the, um, they were associated with a family that they developed um, Matthew's cough syrup. It was a very successful uh, cure. And so it was sold a, a, across, the, the, uh, across New England, I think across the country. Um, they had their own trucks for delivery um, and um, made a, a great business out of it. But um, notice just the, the Tiffany lamps and, and the interior. Some of the interiors of these places were really pretty amazing. And then this, we're, we're proceeding, we're going up Main Street, looking east up the hill. And then this was the Union Block. This, again, in the theme of moving things, um, when Spencer saved, so we have the bank building, which is where the Spencer Bank originated, and then next to it, the next building that they built. But in 1975, 76, um, they decided to expand. They are actually continuing to do that, but they actually decided to expand and then eventually to build a parking lot. This is one of the old, so next to the bank was Doc Austin's house and the um, manse, the, or the rectory for the Congregational Church, and then the, uh, uh, another, another building that, that came along later. But this is, again, now we're, we're getting this, this whole thing with Main Street, we're getting the, um, them moving this out, and here it is coming down Main Street. And, and it, there are other pictures, I didn't have one here, of the rigging crews have had to remove the lines in order to get this to come down Main Street. Um, and notice we have Katie's over here, we have the, the, to to the toy shop. So Spencer was a moving place, Main Street was busy. It was moved off of Route 49. Again, look at these awesome cars, I mean, hmm. Um, so this is when Honey Farms was here. In these blocks down here, we had, at one point, um, this, um, we had the, the Bacon Colette building, they had a drugstore, they had a, a, another kind of, they had a, a dry goods business, a clothing business, and then um, it became a furniture business. Lamoureau was in there for quite some time. Eventually Crowley was in there. Um, and then along these two areas in here were um, two of Spencer's first grocery stores. In, in Spencer's history, um, we, every neighborhood had, um, had small grocery stores. They, they had a butcher who cut the meat to order, you, you got yours, and you either ordered it and somebody would deliver it. And my dad talks about doing that as a job, you know, you get five cents, ten cents to go to the cowboy movies. But um, they, um, you, you could also just go into the store and say, I need this. Though, a lot of people talk about going into Morty's this Morty's over here, okay, I need uh, Wrangler jeans, size blah, 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 and you would get it. Well, that's the way that it was working with the, um, with the stores. But um, then um, in these two stores, storefronts where Honey Farms is, um, was the First National Store and the A&P Store. And they were, um, unlike up at the, there was a, the Mahar block, which is the, un, the union block we were looking at, um, they were, um, Housewives would go in, it was, they, they were, you know, brand name stores, and that was a big, until we got the big stores like Hody's moved down to the uh, other area, um, those were the big stores. This is, a, is something that you won't recognize, this is uh, someone from the Durrell family provided. This was a private home that was at the corner of um, Mechanic Street, on this side of Mechanic Street, and it became Dolan's. Um, before that, it was Richard's um, hardware store, and then it became Dolan's, and I, I couldn't resist this story. So this is about the, this dialogue we have about Main Street businesses, and so this is from May 20th, 54, looks like the telegram. In spite of the fact that some of Spencer's stores have gone out of business and more are going, um, see page three, John J. Dolan's Carroll store is enjoying its usual brisk business. This is an example of the kind of merchandising needed in Spencer. Mr. Dolan came to town seven years ago and opened his store the day that both shoe shops closed down for a few weeks. He had the courage to keep on. Circumstances really required a little extra courage too for someone with malice intent put a skunk into the store and the fragrance, um, and the fragrance was in the store. It wasn't from perfume. Then a rumor started that Mr. Dolan was going to close shop. That got my Irish up, he said, and made him even more determined to succeed. So one of Spencer's um, success stories. Now we're looking at what we know of as Fanuf's. It was the Marsh Block. Um, it was th in, this, uh, in this era, it's, um, so this is early 1900s. This is Prescott Business. They, they, did, they uh, made uh, farming equipment. And then you have 
uh, Mechanic Street down here. I also noticed that they um, made lavish use of trees, these beautiful old elm trees, to uh, put signs up. Okay, and then this is my sort of my elegy to um, to the shoe shop. If you grew up in Spencer, certain in in my era, um, you were told as a kid, you need to study hard, go to college. You don't want to work in the shoe shop. Well, there was a point at which almost everybody in Spencer had put in their time, either as a student, as a um, um, or or as as their work. This is looking up from Mechanic Street, but. Um, it started off with Isaac Prouty over in north, right up near Barclay Road. He started off and he built this business to the right of this. I, this is one of my favorite places too, was Carpenter Drugs, then it was Bolton Drugs. But he um, built this factory. Um, it was a huge economic engine for Spencer. So if you weren't out working in the farms, um, if you weren't working in the wire mills, that's a whole other story, um, you were working in the shoe shops. Now, Spencer had multiple shoe shops, but this was the biggest and the one that most people worked in. And you can see the kinds of machines um, that, were, um, that were in these places. Um, I remember going into this, my father was purchasing agent for Clevens, and I remember going in, I've told this story on a Saturday, in this rickety little uh, freight elevator the kind that OSHA would never have approved, and walking through these floors and the smell of it. And everyone who talks about having been in Clevens talks about the smell of it because it was the smell of leather, um, you know, and all the, 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 the tanned hides. It was the smell of machinery oil, and it soaked into the, um, into the floors. It is a miracle to me that that b building never burned down, but um, Prouty um, was very smart about... Um, about protecting it. So these tall buildings had all of these firewalls built into them, big brick walls, so that if a fire started, it could be contained. He had um, his own fire company um, that he worked with, and they, um, they had actually a space towards the back. They were going to use a cider mill brook to, if they needed a water source. And so they actually um, had planned for it, and, and it, is, it is amazing. Uh, considering what it's like. And this was the office, the ladies in the office up in the um, um, accounting billing area, um, working away. Um, there were also several subsidiary businesses along here. This one was Kingsbury Heel because there were all these businesses. They made boxes to, to package the shoes and they made heels for them. And then it used to be that uh, people would just come pouring out. They, they used the, the one door and people, it, it was like a human ant farm and people would come out. This happens to be um, folks waiting for a parade, this particular one. But look at the people up in the windows, um, all along here, um, huge complex. And then this had the Boltons store next to it. And I've told the story before about Bolton's um, ran a, a, he was a druggist, ran a you know, typical kind of store, but he also had an ice cream counter. And it's, the story is told um, that um, folks that worked up here in the factory would want an ice cream cone. They would take a basket, lower it down with the money and the order for the ice cream cones, and the folks from Bolton's would fill it up and they would haul it back up in. I have never been able to figure out like, did they have to-go cups? I've never figured out how they ever did it. Um, but that's one of the stories that people would tell. And this is where the Spencer Shopper Village is now. Again, this is just people letting out from the business. As it's getting older, eventually Clevens um, had to, to the, the business was failing. Um, they moved to a newer uh, place over North Brookfield. And eventually they moved down to, um, to Tennessee. But the building was at this point in the center of town just falling apart. Now down in this uh, lower section, right underneath the doors, uh, Spencer Printing, if you knew Ralph Warren, his, um, he was associated with that. The decision was made, and, and I won't go into great detail, but um, the selectmen got involved, the town got involved, because Clevin said, listen, we, we want to keep our business here, we know it's important to Spencer, um, but they, made, they kept making counter offers, and they, were never, they could never come to an agreement. And so eventually the building, um, the uh, company w went away. This set of pictures was taken by um, David Souter. Um, and if any of you knew him, he was an amazing photographer in Spencer for many years. He, uh, Gary, um, Gary's his son. Um, he, I, I had the privilege of working with him 
I was a co-editor of my yearbook, the Proudian yearbook, and he, he worked for the yearbook. And he could take an idea, you'd give him a theme, doors, and he would, he would go with it. Amazing. So he took these very evocative finally, uh, final photographs. This is just looking into the factory. There, it's just before it's going to be demolished. And these are shoe lasts. Um, if you come from um, this business, you know that shoe lasts were, they're made either of iron or wood, and they were what uh, were used to form uh, a boot or a shoe onto. So uh, again, sort of evocative. And this next one um, shows how the, 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 the whole area was looking really kind of scary almost. And then this is one um, that he took. This case must be done first. I don't know how that worked. But that pair of shoes, I'm willing to bet, is a pair of mannequins. The last thing that they made were these beautiful women's shoes called mannequins. My mother had a closet full of them, and I always wanted to grow up to be glamorous enough. I was going to go to New York and be glamorous to wear mannequins, and then they closed the store, and it never happened. It was a very high-scale business, and they were doing it um, um, for well into the 50s. And then this is in the days, this is just in, in the time prior to when they're doing this. Um, as you can see, Main Street otherwise is looking the same, but the, the, the building is beginning to look really rough. And then this is the day they actually um, took the building down. And, and a lot of these men, I'm pretty sure, were people who had worked in the shoe shops and were watching this place um, go down. So, and then this, you had seen the big, the huge tower. This is, um, they actually used, had to implode it, so they, they actually mm -hmm. used a device to implode it. And then these are folks sitting probably right over here by the, um, by the Fowlers, um, and they were um, watching. Again, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of those gentlemen had worked in that shop and were watching it uh, be taken down in front of their face. This was from Carpenters right next door. Main Street had a lot of these um, shots. Of, we've got some great interiors that, were, um, that people were going into. Just up the hill now, um, uh, or up on Main Street, and there should be a clue back there. This is, is one of the chimneys from the shoe shop, and this um, is the fire tower. So this was our original town hall. We actually had three town halls, but this was the one that was stood for the longest. And we have the dedication from it, um, music. There was a Germana band. This was um, the dedication for it in 1870. So, or 1873, sorry. Um, and so that was, we had dedicated the town hall. It was a center of town life. You notice that it's, it's getting, uh, decorated uh, during every parade we had, every celebration, and um, the old cars coming down. One thing that you notice up here is the, uh, the poles. About 1914 or so, the selectmen actually had to have a meeting, um, and they contacted the telephone company, the electric supplier, the gas company, everyone who was involved, and the, uh, and the trolley companies, because there were so many wires across Main Street that um, there was actually a buzzing sound at night and that, that it was getting difficult to, to maneuver uh, along this area. And then this is just in front of it, the float uh, representing the uh, uh, World War II, uh, excuse World War I. In 1926, um, the, there was a fire, again a tragic fire, they could not put it out. And this is a, a view of them in the following, whoops, following years. They dedicated in 1928 the new town hall. They had a, a, a big uh, f a fancy ball. They had all kinds of events. This is across the street. This is the National Bank. This actually, it was odd. There were two different banks. It was the Worcester County Trust and it was the Spencer Savings. The Spencer Savings ended up surviving. Um, and upstairs, um, they had ver there were various um, charitable groups that would have meetings or um, events there. This is the other thing that started happening in Spencer. We have um, the introduction of, first of all, trolleys and then buses. Trains went down into the train yard, the depot, or out to South Spencer, but we did have trolleys that came down through the center of town, and of course, you have all of the infrastructure that you have to have with them. The odd thing was that two different companies um, had different, different routes, so you would have to, you, it would turn around in, at Spencer Town Hall, and then you would have to walk down to the corner of Pleasant Street to get to the one that connected to, um, to Warren. This is the Pillsbury home I told you about Arthur Kingsley. Um, yeah, yeah, it became the funeral home. And the other thing I was going to mention is we have a National Register District. We actually did it in three sections. There was a Spencer Center, 
National Register, there is the uh, extended Main Street, and then there was one going down to High Street. We have almost 450 um, entries on the state website for this. We have identified these as, as places of special interest, so that's what is, uh, this is one of the many uh, beautiful homes that were private homes. This became Alan Squires. Alan Squires was known as Spencer. It was the first uh, company in Spencer to offer coffee breaks at 9.15 and 3.15. All of the machines shut down and you had a coffee break. They also were the first ones to offer health insurance to all of their uh, employees. So, are those the buildings still there? Yep, that, this is LaCare Lumber. This is at the corner of Grove Street. You may not recognize it here. Yes, it was um, uh, David Prouty's home, and his housekeeper was allowed to stay on after he died. Then next to it, this was the Star Building. Um, Hezekiah Star and his um, ancestors uh, donated the land for Prouty. This is just another one of the homes that, that he built. The next area up we go is the high school. This is Denny Hall. Denny Hall, now across the street, originally stood up where the high school is. And it was um, the original high school. Again, the same thing happened when David Prouty donated at the same town meeting money to pu put in the high school. Um, this building was moved down across the street from its hill and David Prouty built. David Prouty originally had a much higher tower and then there was a hurricane um, in the 1950s and um, it, the tower was, uh, was brought down quite a bit. This is the other sad story. The first congregational church, again, originally one was built as a, a town hall. Then they built a church um, in, um, in the late 1700s. Then they had a fire in uh, 1862 and built the church that we know. So that's the most recent iteration of the church. Um, David Prouty High School was, um, became a junior high when we built the new school. And so the, um, but, and, and there is the, um, the basketball court that has just been refurbished, another happy story. Um, and just another view, um, the, um, in addition to being a town meeting place, uh, the first burial grounds in most towns were associated with the early church. So this is the old cemetery in Spencer. And this is what happened last year in June. Um, I, I, I don't know if anyone else, I still find it hard to, to drive by there knowing that this had happened. Uh, and everyone did the very best they could, but the church was lost. And so we have the Master Hotel, we have um, the loss of our old town hall. We have the loss um, of this church. Um, real tragedies. This is farther up, uh, just another glimpse of what Main Street looks like. This is a very elegant part of Main Street. This is the corner of Lake Street. This was built by Tilton Sanderson, who was one of our best builders. And it's what we know as Dr. Grace's. It has the columns um, and was, and notice in these days, if your picture was being taken, you got out your best clothes, the entire family, your horse, whatever you wanted to show off. And then as we're heading up towards east, we, we see the church way over here, and then we're getting back up into the, um, part of the upper part of Main Street. This is where um, the Green Factory, Josiah Green was one of the first factories. It is just this side of the, the Dairy Queen, and um, this actual building was one of his first shops. The building on the right is the apartment building toward, that you look at when you go towards the Dairy Queen, still there. That building um, here on the left was the building that was moved, another moving story, um, down to the corner of Cherry Street and became Town Brewing Company. And this is just an early view. Um, at the same town meeting, Luther Hill donated a park. And so up in the background on the left, you can see that building we were just looking at. This is the back of Main Street and the park before all of the trees built in. And that building up on the top is um, the Ghost Mansion. It is the Sibley Mansion. Um, Rufus Sibley was very wealthy. He originally came from Spencer, moved out to Rochester, and um, uh, was a very successful bu businessman. He had uh, stores that, that, he was, uh, that he ran, but he also um, began Sibley Farm. But this um, 
was one of the most beautiful, we have pictures of, of it inside, was one of the most beautiful mansions you can imagine. He brought um, artisans from Europe. It was built up where um, the ball field is at Prouty. So it was right on what we call Moose Hill. That, that was the name of that place. Um, and this um, stayed up um, on the hill. He, they didn't stay, it was more of a summer house. They didn't stay, but um, eventually it, no one was staying, it went to rack and ruin, and the 38 hurricane did serious damage, and they took it down shortly afterwards. And this is another view of the workmen working on this. Uh, they were work inside the windows. It was supposedly just amazing. And this is Sibley Farm. Um, this was um, right the, on your left is where the high school is now. Um, Sibley Farm, for those of us who have fond memories of doing second grade field trips, you went to Sibley Farm, you watched how they bottled the milk, and then you got a free chocolate milk. You got a little uh, chocolate milk. Most of us talk about that. Um, and they were known for their Jersey herds. Um, the Altacrest Farm over North Spencer had Ayrshire cows. This was Jersey cows. And again, you can see this one, the, ma the mansion was still up there. This is all where the high school and the ball field is. And this is um, just a cattle show. Um, I grew up around farms. I, I, I know um, the cows were big in Spencer. And um, this was, you, you could get a special catalog and people would come in to, um, to, buy, uh, to buy this. Um, now we go to what happened since. This is the um, school that opened in 1967. I was the second class to graduate from this school. So the high school moved from, um, from down near the Congregational Church. This was the literature that, I don't know why they did it in violet pink, I'm not quite sure, but this was the, the drawing of the school. This is the school as it exists today. And this is the plan. There are folks here who will recognize this well. This is a plan for the new school. And it's pretty amazing if you talk to anyone on the committee or who is watching this, um, just the modern um, materials they're using, the, um, uh, the kind of uh, plans that they make for this building, pretty amazing. I think it's, it's going to be um, a showplace of that part of Main Street. And this is just up Proctor's Corner. This is, this is another part of how you, made, you know, maintaining the roads and how people got through. This is Proctor's Corner with them shoveling out to get the uh, streetcars through. Proctor's Corner is at Donnelly Road. Um, there are, and, and just beyond that, there's a, a stream there, and, and they used to call it Hemlock Gutter. It was the lowest place on Route 9. Route 9 used to, the main road, the post road, used to go over behind Windy Hill um, um, and then come back down towards Proctor's Corner. So there's been some changing there. And this is a view of Sibley. Um, as many of you know, there was a long time battle. There was a proposed shopping mall that was going to go in on Route 9, um, a, a near opposite, a little bit opposite from uh, Donnelly Crossroad. This is the farm that has been saved. It is um, a joint project of Mass Audubon, um, the Greater Worcester Land Trust, and Common Ground Land Trust, which is the Spencer Lester Grant Land Trust. And so it's now, f there are trails there. Um, this is, um, uh, we're putting in the signs. If you go on Route 9, you can see the signs for Sibley Farm. Um, and there are trails, if you go up and park on Greenville Street, you can see um, the trails that come in through. And then as you're getting up towards the end, we're almost to Breezy Bend, um, we have another marker, and we have uh, Spencer Country Inn. That was originally a private residence, then it was an auto, uh, then it was um, a, uh, yeah, an, an auto dealership, and it was a rest home, Coventry Manor. So um, it's been through several different uh, changes. And this is the end of it. I, I like to think this because I have not told you uh, 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 any, any portion. All the stories I'll ever need are right here on Main Street. It is a pretty amazing um, journey. So that's all I brought. Um, we have dozens more of photos, but I thought, um, again, I didn't want to do the Oppenheimer thing, and so we're on time. I'd love to entertain questions. Is that anybody? Yes. Behind LeClaire Lumber. Yes. Yes, the, yeah, it, it's the That's set. That's a beautiful old building. What's the story behind yeah. it? Um, oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so down, when you go down Linden Street, yeah. um, it, it was the sad company. Actually, it was a universalist church. We had a Baptist church up on Main Street um, uh, 
near where Denny Hall is. Um, that was built, uh, dedicated in 1887. Um, had a diminishing parish, and so that one was taken down in uh, 1839. Um, the University Church had um, had a good run. It's, it's, it's an amazing building. Um, they did not last a long time, the congregation. Many of the churches, the less um, uh, mainstream churches, would, it would depend on who the pastor was. And, and, and how involved the, um, and how involved the Ladies' Aid Society was. That was another, another big thing. But um, the sad building is something that I think there are folks in town who are looking at that. I would love to see that as a historical museum. Raise your hand if you agree with me. <laughs> Raise your hand if you have $2 million. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it was an, it, it was an, she was a universal universalist. Uh, yes, a universalist, yeah, yes. Uh, Um, I have not seen, he's asking if there are interior pictures of the Universalist. I haven't seen interior pictures. I've seen a lot of the exterior ones. Um, that's the thing, um, when I was trying to put this together, uh, for instance, down um, in Westville, back in the beginning, um, there used to be Doré's restaurant. It actually was originally um, a seafood shack that Ray Rich, who has run several seafood establishments in town, it was eventually, a, a, it was in the beginning, a sort of a shack, and then it became LeBlanc's restaurant, and then it became Doré's restaurant. I, I can find no pictures of that. If anybody's, you know, if anybody, I know there are a lot of people who collect the pictures. They're just, it's sort of like the uh, Rainbow Motel or whatever that iteration that had. Um, that doesn't mean I won't come across them. Um, we've had very good luck with people who donate pictures. I know I was researching a farm out on uh, Northwest Road, um, and I couldn't find pictures. I couldn't really pin it down. Um, it's where we, we would know it as the Dillowich property, but I knew it was out near Brooks Pond. And out of the blue, someone, um, her, um, her grandfather came from Spencer, grew up on that farm, ended up uh, getting an education at um, WPI and going on to be an engineer in New York. But she sent me his entire diaries that he kept of growing up on the farm, and then this amazing um, notebook taken about 1911 or 1912, and it is a history of this farm we've been trying to research, and it's, um, you know, them, it's haying time, and of them having, um, you know, everybody uh, sitting out having their pictures taken. It's um, loads of interiors. To your point about interiors are harder to get. Um, and then all of his handwritten notes about what it was like to grow up in Spencer at that time. Those things are invaluable, and um, we're finding more and more that, um, Families are coming to us and saying, my children um, don't want this. It, it's not, you know, they, 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 it's like the brown furniture, you know, the antiques. It's not their, their design sensibility. And so um, the museum has, has really achieved, got some wonderful things because um, people are saying, it's going to the dump if we don't do this. And yet for, for doing original research, diaries, pictures, all of those things help us. But I didn't have interiors. Any other questions? Well, I want to thank you for coming. This was, um, in many ways, the more I did this, the more I realized I had to keep paring things away. And um, so maybe I'll have to do a part two where we get into specific um, stores and some of the private buildings. But I thank you. And, and, and I just have to tell you, one of the joys of doing local history is the stories you tell me back and the things, and, and feel free if you think of something that, that didn't come up tonight or that you'd like to ask my, um, my email is on the library website. I'm chair of the Historical Commission in Spencer, so it's on that website. Um, I'm happy to hear any other stories you want to tell, and I'm going to continue um, preparing some of these kinds of programs. It's, it's great to have these people coming out. So thank you very much. <laughs> you. <Yeah. laughs>